Hello and welcome to Big Jet TV and a very special historic show here at the Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre in East Kirkby. Today we'll be showcasing a classic aircraft Lancaster NX611 Just Jane. We'll be meeting up with one of the volunteers, Spen, who'll be showing us around the inside of the aircraft and then we'll be watching her start up those four Rolls-Royce engines and following her out on one of her taxi runs. Well, that's all to come, but before all the action starts and they wheel her out of the hangar, I managed to catch up with curator Andrew Panton, who explains the history of Just Jane and East Kirkby. I'm Andrew Panton, uh, General Manager of the Aviation Museum here at East Kirkby. I taxi both the Lancaster and the Mosquito. East Kirkby here was originally RAF East Kirkby. It flew with uh, Lancaster squadrons, 57 and 630 squadrons. So Fred and Harold Panton, Fred's my grandfather, they had a brother flying Halifax bombers during the Second World War with Bomber Command. Unfortunately he was lost on the Nuremberg Raid in March 1944. So they really wanted a lasting memorial to him and to all of Bomber Command. And when the Lancaster came up for sale they purchased her, they purchased the land here at East Kirkby and brought it all together to, to form the Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre. We have a team of around eight engineers that work on the aircraft. There's about three of them that are volunteers, uh, all the rest are actually paid um, engineers, so we have a, a big team actually working towards the restoration of the Lancaster. Um, she's currently in a taxiing condition, uh, we made her taxiing in 1995, so she runs under her own engines with her own brakes, um, and we've started the scheme of returning her to airworthiness, um, which is a 10-year plan, and we're currently in year three. So what we're doing is we're doing six months of restoration work, where we focus on a rear fuse life section um, and then we have six months of taxiing to raise the funds to then spend on the restoration work. The Aviation Centre is on a Bomber Command airfield that is primarily about RAF Bomber Command during World War II. So we've got the Lancaster here which is live so it taxis. We also have a Mosquito here which served with the 100 Group which is also live and taxiing now. That particular aircraft is owned by Tony Agar. Um, we have various other aircraft under restoration including uh, Handley Page Hamden. We've got quite a unique collection of World War II RAF vehicles as well including the, the only known crew bus, uh, Fordson Watt 1 crew bus. So with it being on an original wartime airfield with original Lancaster, original equipment, it's like stepping back in time as you come back to the, uh, the museum here. We've got the original control tower set up as it was during wartime and the uh, majority of the buildings here are all original wartime buildings. Not necessarily in the original position but we've brought them here from various neighbouring airfields and sites uh, to really recreate a uh, bomber airfield as it was. So with the uh, local village of East Kirkby there's also RAF Coningsby nearby which is the home to the Battle of Issa Memorial Flight. There's also um, Woodhall Spa which um, housed 617 Squadron Officers Mess which was at the Petwood Hotel, which you can also visit and see some of the displays there from uh, Bomber Command as well. You can go to our website, which is linksaviation.co.uk. From there, you can book a taxi ride on the Lancaster, you can book a tour, you can just buy tickets to events. We have a lot of um, air show and reenactment events around the, uh, through the calendar as well. You could book a winter tour, so you can come and see the restoration work uh, happening. So really, all the information is on our website, linksaviation.co.uk. OK, so thanks to Andrew for explaining all the uh, history of Just Jane and, of course, this wonderful live museum at East Kirkby. OK, they've wheeled her out of the hangar and uh, they're going through some final checks at the moment, checking the fluid levels. We'll be getting on to the action in a little while, but before we do that, let's go and meet up with Spen, who's going to take us on a tour around this wonderful aircraft. Yes, yeah, so you've got here we've got, uh, here we've got the rear turret. You'll notice that we've got two guns on this one, these are 50 cals. Um, if, you see, if you see a turret with four guns on, they are the, uh, the 303s. That was a little pea shoot of Bolton and Paul, wasn't it? That's right, yes, yeah, yeah. So this is, because this is quite a late aircraft, you've got, you've got all, all the upgraded systems on this one. Yeah, so uh, a much happier um, a rear gunner, for sure. Well, he was a bit more devastated when it hit something, definitely. Yeah, for yes. sure. It's I believe they used to remove the, rear, the, the, the perspex out of the rear turrets as well. Sometimes, yeah, for him to get a better view. And of course, very cold conditions as well. Oh, very cold, Minus yes. 30 odd. Oh, yes. These well, are the guys that wore, wore heated suits, didn't they? Heated suits, heated gloves, yes. But even so, it's still, it's still cold up there, yeah. definitely. And the loneliest place on a bomber? Yeah, tail end Charlie, usually, sadly, usually the first guy to go when, when everything kicked off. Um, but strangely enough, he was the one who had the easiest means of exit. Yes. Because um, all he had to do was swivel his turret around 90 degrees and he could just fall out the back. And just make sure his, ch his chute as is, as, is within reach. As long as reach. he remembered to pitch, pick up his chute on the way past. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the flare chute, isn't it? And that's the flare chute, yes. So that would be um, where they would drop... Um, 
coloured flares. Coloured flares, yes, or because when this was used by the French as a, uh, a maritime aircraft, possibly sonar boys. Yes, right, I see, yes. And they had all kinds of uh, different, um, for the evening, uh, the raids uh, for the Pathfinders, like Wangui and stuff like that. Yeah, they, just they, they, they had names. a huge, a huge they, they call them strange names, I mean. <laughs> yes. So as you can appreciate, folks, it's, uh, it's a tight squeeze in here, right, looking down into the rear turret. So the, we've got the entrances literally just slide straight down there. He slides down that pad, but once he's in, he closes two little doors behind him, little doors at the side there. Yes. And uh, he's in, and he's in there for the trip. Is that an electric operated turret? No, it's that, hydraulic, it, that's it? hydraulic. Yeah, the front and rear turrets on this aircraft are hydraulic. Everything that's on the aircraft now was on the aircraft while it was at Scampton. A lot of people be like, why have you got a pigeon, a pigeon in the yes. box? It's quite interesting, sometimes in a ditching situation yes. where they'd send the, uh, yes. send the pigeon, yeah. but they're coming position. across the channel and uh, they've only got a couple of miles to go and they have to yeah. ditch it. And yeah, yeah, with their position on it. And send there were actually, there were actually a, quite a lot of, um, I believe, cases where the pigeons actually saved quite a few lives. Apparently so, yes, crew. yes. There's quite a few pigeons actually, I think, got the dicking medal. Yes. For that yes. kind of thing, yeah. Now this is, uh, this is for the compass, I it believe. Is, it is, this is the, uh, I'll read it off the side here and get it right. It's the repeater reading master unit. Right. Okay, yeah. so that's the... So it's, it's basically... It's, it's a gyroscopic... It's a gyroscopic yeah. compass. It's, yeah. I mean, it, the, the, it's falling off. Isn't it? Yes, of course, but yeah. Um, but it's fully gimbaled. And moving forward, moving okay, forward. so that's the H2S uh, the cover for the H2S. Oh, is yeah. that the, the actual... Yeah, this is the inspection. Yes, if you if we were to take this off, you'd be able to see the radar unit itself, the scanner. Yes. It's a Mark II version of the British H2S. So this was actually used as what we call an air-to-surface vessel. Uh, radar. So they're actually looking for uh, submarine periscopes and that kind of thing. You can see that the inside of this aircraft is truly authentic. Now this pipe running through here, this is this the heating pipe? pipe? This is the heating system, yes. And that would have been drawn off of, of one of the... Uh, the yeah, that, uh, that is drawn from uh, behind the starboard leading edge. I see. Okay, yeah, so from, the engine, so from the, the engine, from the heat from the engine. Yeah, so yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's just the heat from the engine, not the exhaust, obviously. Yeah. And uh, these are, are these flares here? These, these are the flares, yes. Although these these are dummy ones. Yeah. Yeah. So different coloured flares, and I would imagine they'd have a buried pistol on board as well. Yeah. So in some circumstances where the um, one of the crew would fire the uh, the uh, a particular colour as they're approaching to sh say that they've got um, da uh, injured personnel on board yeah, or... Yeah, that kind of thing, yes. yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, this is obviously the mid-upper turret this section, the, so the normally section. we yeah. would have had a... Um, this would have gone all the way to the ground, wouldn't it? Yes. I think, um, yes. with yes. A, big, a, a big rotating That's right, uh, yeah. section yeah. where he would sit yeah. in it and there would be a seat in there and everything. In fact, the, the, the turret that goes in here is actually on a, on a maintenance stand in the hangar. And good for, for, the, for the taxi ride. You get a lovely view. Yeah, you yes, get a fantastic yeah. view. So we're now coming up, this is the, this is the screw for the, uh, for the flaps, isn't it? I believe. This is the hydraulic ram. It's okay. hydraulic. Yeah. Yeah, that operates the flaps. So this is coming up from behind the, the starboard wing and then feeding off in that direction. Where the Rebecca indicator is on this one, yes. uh, you'll see that's where the H2S indicator okay. is. These, uh, these items here, and there's two more here, are the uh, voltage regulators from the, um, from the generators on the engines, and that, of course, is emergency air. That, of course, is a fire extinguisher. And you've got uh, those, uh, you've got the hydraulic tank Something that is vulnerable to attack, I have to say. Yeah, you get a bullet through that, your hydraulics are out. Okay, so this is the uh, radio operator this station. This is the radio operator station, yes. And that's all the um, the original set by the looks of it. It is, it is. These are original. Is that the, um, and the trailing aerial? Where would the trailing oh. aerial, is that the, is that the set over there, that one with the switches on it? Is that, that one there? It's just got the knob it's, on the end of it. It's just yeah. a big lump yeah. that sticks out. Yes, yeah. yeah. And that's your, um, and that is your, the drift indicator, the left and right, That's is that? right, yeah. Yeah, that's the drift indicator. And more flares, of course. Okay, let's move forward up to the business end. Now, I'm definitely going over the spa now. Yeah. Okay. Now, imagine climbing over that. Yeah. You're in full kit. Yeah. Um, 
the captain's bought it or the aircraft is on fire and you've got to get out quickly. Yeah. Okay, so now this is the uh, navigator station. Right. So this is this is This would be the H2S set. This would be. Yes. But in this aircraft this is this is the Rebecca. Yes. Right, which is the which is the uh, the the, you know, okay. the landing aid. Um, other than that, everything else is pretty uh, fairly, authentic, yeah, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. That's his uh, plotting desk. It is. It's, it's He's actually, sitting there for the full flight. He would be, he'd have a little seat that swung out from underneath here, and yes. he sat here, so he's got his, his desk light, he's got his light for the, for the repeater instruments, because he needs to know how fast they're going and what height they're at. Yes. Because he's going to be doing um, all the navigation calculations, he'd be there with his stopwatch, yes. and he'd be saying, right, we're doing, we're doing sort of uh, 200 knots, right, so in, in 10 minutes we need, you know, 20 degrees port, 20 degrees stopped or whatever, yes. to go on to the next heading. You can then calculate on here what your drift is, and then you can tell the pilot, and he'll give it just a little bit of rudder. The flight engineer's panel right here, he's going to be keeping a check on the engine temperatures, oil temperatures, I guess. Yes. The red ones here, are they fuel cocks? They, they're, 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 um, they're, they're fuel cocks, yes. Yeah. What you can do with those um, uh, is you can actually use them to transfer fuel from one yes. tank to another, so you know if you've got a hole in your port number two, yes. you can transfer it into the starboard number two. Yes. Let's just have a little look down into the, uh, the bomb aimer's position. Obviously, um, uh, now sometimes uh, I believe that the the bomb aimer would double up as the uh, front gunner. Is That's that correct. right? Yes. Yes. And, and the course. he doesn't need to be the bomb aimer all the time. So no, no, he only needs to be the bomb aimer for about five minutes. Yes. Um, and there's all his, his equipment down there, and of course the. Uh, the bomb sites and so on and so forth, and that's the computer down there, I believe. Okay, the, that square item. Yes. That, that, yes. That's the bombing computer. Yes. And if you just, I'm not, well, I'll shine my torch on it. Okay. That round. Yeah. That round thing there. That is a Sperry autopilot. Ah. It's just to uh, give the pilot a bit of rest on on the 12-hour missions. I see. Um, I see. So that would that would give them sort of a uh, continuous heading and continuous height. Okay, so once again, um, all authentic front end here uh, in the in the flight yes, deck. Yes. This is uh, his compass over here. That's the G4B compass. Yes, that's the if you like. That's the um, that's the well, yeah. There we go. Yes. That's the that's the emergency. So when all else fails, yes. At least he's got a basic compass. Yes. To get him home. Now that particular style of compass was quite common in RAF aircraft, right up. Um, until sort of the mid 60s. Now a lot of people may be asking, well hold on a minute, I've seen Lancasters with uh, two pilot seats in them uh, and again this is purely authentic. Um, they may be mistaking it perhaps with BBMF's Lancaster which yes. has to have uh, uh, two pilots I do believe so, yes. seat and obviously two control columns yes, as well. Yeah. So is that something that, that, that will eventually happen to this aircraft? We do have the kit to retrofit, if you'll excuse the, the rhyme. Um, yeah, we've, uh, it's, it's something that uh, is in, in the pipeline. Yes. But at the moment, uh, because you can imagine, um, it's a bit awkward for people to get down the front on a taxi run. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, I guess that'll kind moment. of block it off once it's uh, it, once it's it in. up to a point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right out there are our two uh, beautiful Merlin engines. Obviously the port side, and then starboard side over there. And of course uh, these engines have been fully restored. Uh, right. Okay. Well, there we go. Thank you, Spen, so no much. Um, You're welcome. You are now famous. <laughs> and um, we really appreciate your time. You can go and have your breakfast now. Lovely job. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Those two to number two tanks. That's it. Think we're happy for Prime, John? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to talk to the fireman. Again, right. Uh, radio call will fly. Fire one is the X ray radio check. Right, receiving your diving clearance. Sir. Right, John. What we do is while they're priming, uh, switch your your starboard number two boot to front one. Then you can open these. So your number three for five seconds. Shut it. Number four, five seconds. Shut it.
carry switch up uh, across so it, this, it, the guard is away and then these two can come up to there yeah. and this can go on. And the brakes are good, they're at 300. Level. Uh, yeah, they need to stay there. We still got to chop your side, John? Yeah, we've got to chop that. Good GP. Audio? Happy Dave? Yeah, carry on. Happy Liz? Okay. Want to boost the front door? Yeah, so give Andrew a signal. That's it, uh, number three. Go along. Turning three.
Okay, so there you go then, folks. Uh, what a fantastic example of a working Lancaster bomber these guys have here at East Kirkby. Thanks once again to all the hard-working volunteers and, of course, to uh, the staff here who've laid this on for us. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Big Jet TV.